example, to make you weak. Okay? Or you, you, may, you might need a higher dose of amitriptyline if you are depressed. Or if you might need a higher dose of clozapine if you are schizophrenic. Okay? Or fluvoxamine, again, if you are depressed. So that's what it means. Okay? So when you have a substrate, and then you have, you are taking one of these substrates of sub uh, of sip one a two, and then you take an inducer. What happens is that the, the it will um, these substrates will be acted upon quicker by the sip one a two. Okay, it will quickly change because you have been induced. Okay, when you take an inducer, it will make the conversion, the metabolism faster. Okay, so the changes to the these drugs will be faster. Okay. So that means that this will be converted into in its inactive form faster by taking these inducers. Okay. So that means that you will need a you will you need a lower or higher dose of this if you take an inducer. Yeah, you need a higher. Okay, because whatever is active in your body has been converted, it has been changed to something inactive in a fast in a very fast rate. So that's why you need to increase the doses of these drugs once you are taking an inducer. Okay? So this is actually under the discussion about drug-drug interaction. Okay? Sometimes it's not drug-drug, it can be drug-food interaction. Okay? Or drug and other stuff. Okay? Okay, tobacco is considered drug. Okay? Okay, so this is food, uh, this is drug, okay? nicotine and other stuff. Okay, um, and then we have inhibitors, okay? Inhibitors, for example, if you are taking caffeine, okay, if you are taking caffeine, and then you also take simetidine. Simetidine is a drug that is taken for um, gastritis, okay? Simetidine is a drug that is taken for gastritis. Uh, ciprofloxacin is a drug, is an antibiotic, okay, given to treat. Uh, certain conditions, certain infections. Okay, so for example, if you are taking this and then you take these inhibitors, what happens? Do you need a lower or higher dose of uh, substrate? Uh, you will need a lower because you will inhibit the process of metabolism. Okay, these drugs will inhibit the metabolism by C1A2. Okay, once you inhibit, that means that you will have a, a higher or you will have the high level of the drug remaining for a longer time. So you will have the active form of the drug for a longer time. Okay? So that's why you, when you take an inhibitor of C1A2, together with this, so you will need a lower dose of this. Okay? So this is just one example for C1A2. Okay? And then you will have to apply the same concept to C2D6, C3A4, C2, C19, and the rest. Okay? But this is just um, the concept that you need to understand. And you should understand this for the rest of your medical life. Okay? Because this is very... Um, during your time, I think you will be more liable to know this. Okay? Because a lot of people will sue you okay, if you give certain drugs together and you get a reaction. Because, for example, if you give inhibitors, and you still give the same dose of clozapine, for example, that means that the higher dose will remain in your body for a longer time. So you will see more adverse effects from the drug. Okay? You will see more unwanted effects. More problems will be seen. Okay? Once you give an inhibitor in the substrate. How many do not understand this? Ask more power. Okay. Uh, this is just a table showing you um, the various substrates uh, for the drugs. Okay. Uh, you don't have to memorize this, just be aware of the uh, of the categories. Okay. And this will actually make more sense to you in your third, fourth, fifth year. Okay. Nowadays, it doesn't make much sense because you're just in form school and you don't know a lot of these drugs. So, 
even if you file here, maybe you will be struggling with this risk. Okay? So these are substrates. And then we have the inducers in this. Um, just now we were talking about 1A2. Okay? 1A2, where is 1A2? Is, that, is it? Okay, this one. Okay, 1A2. So 1A2 is somewhere here. Okay? And then we have the 1A2 um, inducers here. For example, we have marijuana. Okay? Uh, what is marijuana? So what do you mean? Uh, ganja. So if you, if you are a ganja addict, okay, you will need a higher dose of your sip one a substrate. Okay? Because you will need a higher dose. Okay? Because your if you're a chronic marijuana smoker, it will metabolize your um sub C1A2 um substrate faster. Okay? Okay, and then we have the inhibitors. Okay? So this is a, a complete list. So in an ideal situation, okay, the pharmacist will have a software, okay? that will detect these interactions okay, and then they will alert the doctor about the possible interaction because doctors usually they have no time to, um, to be bothered sometimes okay, about the interactions they just know to give drugs okay, they, don't, they don't sometimes think about the possible um, um, adverse effects that might result in giving so many drugs or giving more than one drug or just giving one drug, and then the patient is taking something like grapefruit juice, for example, or some other drugs. Okay, so they have no time to, um, to figure out or think about this. So uh, the pharmacy should have a software, okay? And, and whenever there is a possible interaction, uh, the pharmacy should call the doctor and alert him, okay? So the doctor needs to understand this, okay? And he must think whether he wants to increase, decrease, or just maintain the dose that he was giving, okay? Because once, what usually happens in the hospital is that you um, you decide, okay, you diagnose the patient's condition, and then you write the prescription, okay, you think what you want to give the patient. For example, you give uh, one drug plasiline, plus um, chlorpheniramine, and so many other drugs. And then the patient will take the script, okay, prescription, he brings it to the pharmacy. Okay, the pharmacy will look at it, okay? So the pharmacy will write, um, in a, an ideal situation, okay? He should key in all the drugs that the doctor has prescribed and then he, will see, he, he or she will see is there a possible drug interaction or not, okay? So what kind of, kind of advice do you need to give the patient, okay? So that's the, an ideal situation, but uh, in Malaysia, usually it does not really happen. Most hospitals don't have this software, okay? We are still a bit outdated in this sense. So, so there are a lot of possible uh, potential drug drug interaction. Okay, but the common ones, of course, a lot of drugs are patient, uh, doctors will know. But the the rare ones and uncommon ones, the doctors might not be aware of. So it's always good to look at this table and and think about it and try to understand it. Okay.